I'm just going pee. One okay. sec. Alright, good evening ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. My name is Sparhawk. I am co-casted tonight by a Phoenix Rising member. His name is Northern Touch. Northern, say hello and tell everybody a little bit about yourself, which team you play for, which role. Uh, sure. Hey guys, um, I'm Northern Touch. I am the uh, captain and main tank for Phoenix Rising Diamond, which is in the A division right now. I've uh, been playing the game for a year and uh, excited to see some uh, some teams I'm familiar with uh, play in the game today. Um, should be a good game. Awesome. So uh, the Devils Rejects won the toss. So Hello Kitty banned Volskaya Foundry and Dragonshire. The Devils Rejects banned Battlefield of Eternity and Alterac Pass. And we are going... Oh, I never chose who picked that. We are going to Cursed Hollow. Give me one second. Let me update that. There. Now you can see who has the pick. All right. So I'm going to see if the teams are ready to get into it. I'll let them know they're ready. And let's get going. So how are you doing tonight, Northern? Uh, I'm doing great. It's the weekend. So get some time to relax. Uh, 
have uh, hopefully some less stressful downtime casting before uh, we get into playoffs uh, starting next week. So uh, so cool to see some teams uh, wrapping up their season and uh, it's going to be uh, still some exciting time because uh, I think both uh, both teams have uh, at least a little bit on the line in terms of uh, playoff positioning and uh, who they're going to be facing in the first round. Yeah, I, I love these um, middle matches, you know, where you, you have the option of, you know, you could be maybe third or fourth, you know, or you could be like fifth or sixth. I mean, I, I love like when the grittiness of the playoffs, you know, as you're getting so close and every game matters. Yeah, it really comes down to it. The first, like the first couple of games, a lot of times it's feeling out your team after maybe doing some scrims during the summer, that sort of thing. But uh, this is really, uh, really time where teams are trying to get themselves together and trying to get the position right and uh, trying to work out all the kinks before the game starts. All right, uh, let's head into the draft. Again, I want to welcome everybody. My name is Sparhawk. I did not set up Northern's camera, so that is on me. Um, just because his beauty and awesomeness would way outshine me. <laughs> so, I mean, you just get the stuck with my ugly mug. But, uh, so Cursed Hollow, um, what would you look for, um, when drafting? Like, what, do you want the, uh, mobility? Like a Falstad, Brightwing, Dahaka type, or... So there's a couple uh, unique strategies to Curse Hollow. Uh, one is that you don't actually have to go for tributes, and you can stall them out while uh, out macroing the team. So uh, globals, while having like a team that stalls, maybe with like a junk rat or some poke, is really good. Um, your other option, of course, is to fight over every uh, every tribute, which uh, is of course very good as well. Uh, boss control characters are really good. Um, one of those boss control characters, Garrosh, just got banned. And, uh, and yeah, the, so there's a bunch of different strategies. Uh, it's kind of unique because the actual tribute, you don't have to get right away. You, you don't necessarily have to get the first two tributes. So you have a lot of options in terms of what your play style is on this map. Yeah, usually when I uh, play with, a, with teams, I try to um, try and just stall a little bit while you're getting pressure in the other lanes, like two safe characters who can get away. And if they can stall, they stall. You know, but you're trying to get soak in those other lanes, pushing things, maybe getting to like a tower or something down, you know. Yeah, and and we just saw uh, like the Asmodean ban, which yeah. kind of indicates to me the other team doesn't want the other team to run it down. So uh, they're kind of forced more to go to the tribute when you have like characters that are banned out that are going to run it down an opposite lane that aren't going to necessarily go to every tribute like an Asmodean. Uh, and Asmodan, too, if left to his own devices in a, in a lane away from the objective, I mean, he's such a pain. He has so much push control. And we have a Lee Ming ban as well, so that's taking away some more poke. I'm wondering if we're going to see a Chromie ban. What do you think? Uh, Chromie is very good on this map. Anything that works well in uh, tight corridors, so Lee Ming is really good, Chromie is really good. Um, if you can't dodge skill shots, then uh, <laughs> that character is going to work well when uh, all the lanes are really tight. And there's a Sonya ban. Sonya's really good for taking camps on this map, as well as uh, really good in tight chokes, whirlwinding on top of people's faces. That is true. So first pick, Stukov. Uh, another really strong healer for this map, for the point control, or the stall anyway. Oh, for sure. Sets up combos. Uh, the uh, silence, because it is a very tight map, is hard to get out of. The, basically, the silence is about as large as any of the corridors on this map. So, uh, very good character. One of the best healers in the game. Definitely a strong first pick. I agree. And in regards to chat, I 100% agree with Deathwing on this map. He can stall for days. I know because I play Deathwing, and he can just... It just pisses people off because they stand there for like two minutes and you just stall constantly. Yep. But anyway, for Hello Kitty action, we have Tychus and Lucio. Thoughts on those picks? So Tychus is really good uh, a burst uh, damage dealer. Lucio is actually one of those characters that's really good at stalling. Uh, but if you see on the side uh, with the Varian and Kilthos pick up with a Stukov, that is very much a blow up comp. That is oh, very much sure. a taunt, taunt a target silence and root them and then blow them up so uh lucy is gonna have to really watch out of his positioning especially if they're trying to do a stall now i'm i'm wondering if they're gonna keep varian as a taunt varian or maybe bring in 
another tank like a, a May or someone, and then Varian goes Twin Blades, and he can just solo bosses. I mean, that is legitimate. If the other team you don't think is going to scout, uh, especially camps or boss, uh, Varian can do some serious damage on bosses and, uh, and camps if left alone. The downside is if it is a taunt Varian, that's going to cause a lot of hurt for Lucio early in the game because his heals, although he's healing everybody, aren't that strong individually. Yeah, uh, I think if you're going Lucio into the variant here, you're probably going to want to pick a high five just because you can get the person out of the taunt and you yourself are going to be unstoppable as well. So um, uh, that would be my suggestion for Lucio. Um, but uh, generally, uh, that's a pretty dangerous uh, side, at least in team fights on the left-hand side. I'd like to see the uh the other team gets some uh some macro here in this this phase of the draft there's the chromie and etc i like so it. so again kind of kind of blow up a lot of control as well i think they the uh the right it's team on the right hand side is poke for days if they really want to stall tributes it's just really yes. about not getting very taunted and dying and at what point uh, they can do that early game uh, levels four to ten they might be in some trouble at least for getting picked by varian if they're going taunt I'm almost thinking I'm going to see a Leo for the last pick. Oh, they're going Ragnaros. Wow. Rag, great macro. Um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, not not really great into the Tychus per se, but the macro is legit. Uh, not sure if uh, if Hebrew Hammer picks Lava Wave or picks the, um, uh, the Hammer. But uh, either one can work. Hammer with the variant taunt is really good, and Lava oh, Wave yeah. for just general clear is awesome as well. Yeah. And a final pickup of a Diva. Uh, these are two really different comps, and I don't know which one I. Th if they can control the variant, then Hello Kitty Action Squad has a chance. Right. If they can't, I think if they can't control the variant or the Stukov then they could be in a little bit of trouble. Yep, I think you're going to want ETC in the front line, and he's going to want a W as soon as uh, Varian charges in to interrupt him from uh, doing a taunt right away. And for the right hand, uh, for the um, Hello Kitty action, action Squad right now, uh, they have quite a bit of poke. Like, it's it's kind of legit of how much control they have over uh, an individual um, objective here. All right. So I, I would very much like to see uh, that side poke down the other team and try to establish as much macro as possible. Okay, so let me introduce the side of the Devil's Rejects. We have Satan Saves on the Varian. Hebrew Hammer on the Ragnaros. Kind of almost fitting. Symbolic on the Phoenix. Soldier of God on the Kalthos. And Stukov is played by Lunatic X. What do we have on the other side? We have Isex on ETC. Uh, Slips is playing on Chromie. Uh, Jmond is playing on Diva. We've got uh, Mid Midrassi, I think it is, on Tychus. And we have uh, Isridor on the Lucio. All right, so a little bit of poking and prodding to start off. Big jump in. Yeah. Diva went full metal. Yeah. Rag is heading right to the bottom to get a soak down there. Diva's heading to the top. And we do have overpower taken by the Varian, so he is definitely going to be going taunt. I like the overpower. I prefer the overpower over the lion's fang. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I typically will take the overpower, especially if I'm going into a Tychus like this, just because it's going to reset the cooldown of it a lot. Really good slide there in the mid by ETC. Uh, but generally, they're just poking each other down right now, trying to establish as much as they can in wave. You see Phoenix at the top is actually uh, doing pretty well in that matchup versus D.Va right now. Oh, for sure. Uh, is uh, trading uh, shields for health, which is always a trade you're going to want to see considering how uh, easy it is to regen shields. And an early, is that an early hearth by the D.Va? It is. Go back and get health. 
And there's another uh, early hearth by the Tychus there too. So kind of uh, giving up your lane priority. I'd like to see these other teams kind of sit there in lane and either push if they can't, don't think they're going to get there in time, or you get to stall out the, the minions and they're going to lose some minion experience. I think what they're doing now is a really smart thing though. They moved Diva down to take care of Ragnaros. She'll win that fight. That's a given. Yep. And uh, I think Tychus... I mean, he's going to be able to burn uh, Phoenix's shield rather easily. For sure. So and I, the, the grenade actually will interrupt uh, the port away as well. Exactly. So I think it's, it's a, a really smart move to, to switch those two around. And I think both teams are doing the right thing here, taking their, uh, their, top, um, their top camps first and then going to the bottom one because we see the tribute is spawning top and therefore right. you're going to want uh, camps in the opposite lane uh, pushing. So correct uh correct minion uh, uh camp kills by uh, both teams here all right so both teams you have approval by northern what you're doing so far is correct <laughs> you may continue to play <laughs> <laughs> so the first tribute is spawning let's see what teams want to do with it So interesting part about the red side uh, taking their camp first is it's going to crash against the other uh, team's wall here. Right. And it means it's going to get taken out right away. And so the middle camp is going to continue to push while this tribute is up. And if they can stall it out, then it's going to do some serious damage against uh, uh, Hello Kitty Action Squad's wall here. However, they have a camp pushing bottom with D.Va. So if they can really limit the amount of people who die which are lucio and chromie and there and you get to see the power of the early uh early varian the level four to ten varian uh just taunted target passive abilities on that target person dies pretty easy and, and diva got a lot of work in the bottom lane that's for sure yeah, yeah diva's basically gonna get the entire wall and if lucky uh maybe the well as well which would be really good but uh, you see in the middle, the uh, the camp got the wall as well. So yes. Kind of a trade here, I'd say, so far. Uh, Devil's Rejects have probably been getting a little bit better macro in terms of the amount of damage on some of these structures. The next objective will be spawning top, this time uh, slightly on the Devil Rejects side. So we'll have to see how they want to play it out. Go ahead. So with no uh, no camps left, this this is going to be about positioning. You kind of want your uh, players to rotate up, rotate up a bit early. The push out waves rotate it up as fast as they can so they get uh, visual positioning and can go on any target because you don't want Varian to be there first, especially right. in a bush with uh, other characters around. No, I 100% agree with you. So they are being smart though. They're going to clear out this top wave just before Ragnaros gets there and they could maybe lock him down. However, they need to be careful. They're coming from both sides. There's a taunt. There's a silence. BTC gets away. Able to boot them. Everybody's here. Phoenix is on his way. We do have the Falling Sands by the Crony. Nice Diva mech. Oh, and I think they got Varian here. Yep, Varian's dead. Oh, finally. They did take out the Tychus, though. ETC is going down. Oh, bomb it, sharing. The chain bomb is doing a lot of work in these fights. Dave's uh, going down. Because of how Lucio works, having to get close to other characters, it makes it very difficult not to spread bombs in situations like that. Very close to a death by Chromie, but um, in general, a uh, really good start for the blue side. Uh, said earlier, four through ten is really good for the Varian. I think um, I think Hell's just got to reestablish some uh, macro if they can here and try to get ten, hopefully before this next tribute. Yeah, I think that's what they're doing. They have Tychus in the bottom. He's going to be able to handle himself against the Phoenix, especially more when they get their tens. The tens are really going to help them all out when you get sound barrier or high five. Oh, and what, Varian's got to watch himself. He almost died under Fort. It's a Traxic. Thank you very much for the follow. Oh, and thank you for the bits. Thank you very much. 
So I really want to see the red team start moving down soon, just so that Varian doesn't get set up here. They do have the Great. tens now. We do have the marsh pit for the ETC. They got the healer out at a position here. They're pushing in on them, but it doesn't look that like they got in quick enough. Channels interrupted. They're trying to get the stall. So blue doesn't necessarily have to take oh. this fight right now if they don't want to. They should probably just back up, but they get the kill goes anyway. down. Yep. That planet cracker just did work. Diva's out of her mech. She's in a world of trouble. But she does get a kill though. Yeah, no. Slowing Sands is doing a lot of work, slowing their team and making them very There's easy a to see. Tychus goes down. Chromie's in trouble here. Need speed to get away, and speed works. Um, meanwhile, up at the top, the uh, the minions have taken down the uh, the fort, and uh, this is going to be a tribute for the Devil's Rejects. Yeah, this curse is going to do a lot of work. They're going to take the siege camp, and they can just push wherever they choose. Yeah, I think you're going to at least get two forts down, and uh, depending on the lane they end up pushing, it could possibly be a keep at this point. It is an even talent tier fight. Ragnaros takes, uses his trait ability in the mid lane to try and start putting work down that center or the mid keep gate. That's bottom, a lot of damage. Bottom fort is gone. ETC is so, yeah. trying to minimize the top control coming from top. Right, heroes it coming in. It looks like uh, like Devil's Rejects is using this time to uh, to get the boss because they didn't really have any more lanes to push, at least unless they were pushing them together. And uh, after this, I think you might even see them try to go and contest uh, the other team's boss. Oh, it looks like they, they might be thinking lots, about it. Lots of time to do it too. Yeah, <clears throat> eight to two are the kills. Thirteen to two or twelve is the level. So it's about a full level lead for the side of Devil's Rejects. Yeah, but uh, this is going to make it so it's an uneven talent here fight. You do have a D.Va bomb there, which is interesting. See him choose not to use the taunt on the D.Va. Uh, the other team has sniffed it out and is moving up. I don't know if they'll be able to get here in time, but the bomb is up for D.Va, so that's going to be probably a big factor in this fight. There is a Marsh Pit too available. Yep, there's only two interrupts on the on the side of uh, Devil's Reject right oh, now. they're letting it go. Yep, I think that's the right call. They weren't 13 yet, they didn't die, and uh, they can clear both of these uh, without uh, losing uh, keep here. I think it's too early. So, Chromie and Tychus took care of the bottom boss. Now they're working their way to defend against the top boss. There is a bruiser camp in mid. But as long as I think if they clear that mage out and take that spell shield away, they should be fine. Yeah, it uses the uh, the bomb there to help clear the boss, but the swipe back actually knocks it away from a lot of the minions there. Uh, interesting interaction. Planet Crocker goes out, just misses targets. And you see the There's a mosh. The oh, big mosh. Few interrupts here. Can the damage get into it on time? Lots of damage. ETC Taunted goes down. Damage, but they're all really low. KT goes down. Tychus. Oh, Tychus gets the uh, the Lucio um, Lucio speed, which is huge. But there's only two of them here. Almost uh, almost could have turned that around from uh, Devil's Rejects there. Yeah, oh. the team had followed up for sure. But uh, if if the if the Hello Kitty Action Squad gets this next tribute, this is the fight they want. They want the other team uh, before they hit 16. Oh, and, sure. Uh, they're going to be slower to that fight, so they need to get down that tribute quick. Um, if I was uh, Devil's Rejects, I would actually even consider not uh, doing this um, tribute at all, and that's what it looks like they're doing. They're establishing macro and getting 16. And yet Hello Kitty are still tentative to head on over there. 
Yeah, uh, just uh, probably shouldn't have gone to the camp, just right to the tribute. Um, now it's going to be a 16 14 fight, and you've got uh, two camps pushing to one, so uh, heavy macro, macro advantage right now for Devil's Rejects. Yeah, and I think just turns away from Hello Kitty being able to uh, take the tribute to having to give it up now. Yeah, I think uh, at this point Hello Kitty has to play for 16s, and uh, then they have a long period of time before 20, and uh, they can team fight then on an even talent tier. But in the meantime, the uh, the macro is pushing in hard, so um, I think um, Hello Kitty's got to wait to 16 here and just reestablish macro on this next tribute. Oh, I 100% agree. They definitely need their 16s. And there uh -huh. is a camp coming top that they're going to have to deal with. Oh, for sure. And um, I think they just give up this tribute and just clear to get their 16. Yep. So there's the it's taunt. A Plan a cracker on the Chromie. I think her stasis goes last longer. The Chromie than. just gets out. High five goes out to get Chromie free. Yeah, this is a pre-16 4v5, so uh, you have Devil's Rejects kind of forcing it down mid, which is good. Like, you want to use your advantage here. Lots of Chain Bomb spread there. That was a really good two-person gravity lapse as well. For sure. And they, uh, Hello Kitty's got to clear this top here. They're okay to lose this tribute, I think. I think you use this time here if you're Hello Kitty to reestablish and get these lanes out. And uh, hopefully uh, gain some vision and take a fight from there. And it looks like they're going to try and push down this top keep. However, it looks like Hello Kitty's coming from the side onto yeah, them. And, they are and there's a mosh. Big mosh. Very few interrupts. Swipe goes out. They get Ragnaros, though. Yep. And this is the exact fight that uh, Hello Kitty wanted. And they get uh, two kills so far, and they're rotating on KT. KT's in trouble. They're going to get him. He is not getting yeah. away. He is not getting away from Especially, that. Oh, nice. Gravity lapse, though. And uh, they probably need to send at least a couple, maybe even D.Va, to the tribute. Because uh, even if uh, KT's dying here, uh, you don't want to lose tribute here either if you can get it. Now, it looks like ETC and Chromie are on their way. Let's head down there. Check out this action. I think they're just going to give it up, though. Yep, it looks like it. They saw, uh, they didn't know how many were on the map because the rest of the team was out of vision, and uh, that's not a fight you want to take, 5v2, so. Casey Court, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it, my friend. And they're using this to uh, to get boss because of the timings of the last boss. It means that their boss is actually going to be safe to get uh, right after this, so they can either choose to push bottom, which I think I might do in this circumstance, or uh, they go right up to their boss and get that pretty safely i'd say yeah i think they could go double boss here and yeah. the objective is right there and they definitely need that boss in that lane because these catapults are just wreaking havoc onto this bottom keep yeah i think this is a huge macro advantage if they get this boss down um all the other camps are on their side of the map even if uh uh, they, it looks they're looking good for this tribute as well. So either the other team is defending bosses or they're going to contest this tribute. Looks like they're going to contest, and just a little bit too late to contest on a boss. But you don't want to be there with an ETC with Masha for sure. Oh, there's a taunt. Just plant a cracker. And here comes Mosh. Mosh goes out. Gets interrupted. <coughs> ETC in a little bit of trouble. And uh, the Chain Bomb is still doing work against uh, Hello Kitty. And now they're going to have to back up. You've got uh, the top keep is going to get taken here by minions. Another taunt going out. Chromie goes down. Diva drops her bomb. Stukov just says, oh, here, back at you. Oh, so nice. So what a good save. Wow, what a turnaround. Hebrew Hammer is getting taken down too, but he channels in time. No, he doesn't. No, he does not. Tychus gets taken. Wow, what a turnaround. They have to defend here now because of the uh, the tribute, but uh, ooh, this 3v2 right under a core. Core is not disabled. Nope, this is going to be close. And there's, 
There is only one damage on the on the side of Devil's Rejects. I think they do have enough for it, though. The minions are going to take it down more than anything. But they do put pressure on them. Satan Saves has to back out here. Uh, oh, taunt on is still on core, though. I think it's... 40%? Out. Stugoth down. And uh, this is a, a huge advantage right now if you're uh, Hello Kitty. If you can clear this and push out, uh, you've got a lot of time for uh, to get 20 and to get a tribute here or to even push down a, a fort and get back in this game. Oh, I 100% agree with you. And it looks like ETC is going to start the Bruiser camp. Chrome is going for the Siege camp on their side. Phoenix is grabbing his Bruiser camp with the Steam. But there are no forts left, and there are five structures still for the side of the Devil's Rejects. So it's yep. st it's it's still in the Devil's Reject hands to lose this game. Yeah, and this is the point it. where you're going to want Hello Kitty to push up and to gain vision of the other team and to take a fight before the healers back up. Because this is their window. They have all their for forts and keeps down. You want to fight here. And oh, we yes. see the flank by ETC. There's the Marsh, Gravity Lab, Planet Cracker. Big red button goes out. See if ETC gets slide in time. If he can get a slide, this could be good. Slides through. Gets a bomb. Could spread. Bomb is big again. And spreads again. So that was the fight that they wanted, but they are getting macro pushed out again with these camps they got. Um, I think this this next fight really will uh, be a big determiner on who wins it. If uh, if Hello Kitty gets like two or three kills on this next tribute, they can go bottom and keep, and uh, finish the game. Uh, any deaths could mean the the end of uh, Hello Kitty though if uh, one of them dies. So it's uh, coming down to it. These are like the last probably the last couple of fights. Yes. And I'm curious how much they're going to show bottom. Oh, they are showing three bottom. Oh, so, they're gonna, looking like they're going to back door here. Yeah, they, they showed themselves, though. So, the, But they showed themselves in wave. So uh, you see uh, Hello Kitty is immediately being yep. back. They sniff it out. So they have to establish position here. Not let them get on core. Oh, but the, the rag is in, yeah. huge. If he casts all his ability on core, this might be it. Uh, blue team has to rush core right now. Put as much damage on it as possible. I like how the diva is trying to burn the rag out of his multi form. So that that's used. Taunt goes so out. The taunt. Yep. We do have a diva explosion. Massive, nice massive. and marsh. Huge turn. Whoa! Three GT people. Run. Four people. If they five people, it's a okay. So you keep Diva here now, and you push everybody bot. But it looks like they're gonna use it to tribute. They have to. They have to answer this top wave. Looks like they're keeping Tychus here to do it. Rest of the team looks like they're going bot boss. This is another win condition. They get the for uh, sure. Get the tribute, yep. Get the boss and push uh, with a uh, twenty minute boss. This can take game. Uh, Tychus clearing up the pressure coming in on their core. This boss is going to help greatly, and they're going to take this boss without a problem. Especially so now that Diva's here. Yep. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about during draft is uh, ETC uh, Mosh interrupts. Mosh has been a massive part of this game. Um, there's only really uh, two and maybe three interrupts if, uh, if Reg is going to blow a hammer on it, but uh, it's making a huge difference in some of these fights for sure. I'm surprised he didn't. He, I, I understand for both of the storm for the surprise, but I'm surprised he didn't go death mosh. A uh, death mosh would be really good here, especially if you become the taunt target and you don't get to get a mosh off. It basically gives you a mosh on top of the the variant because the variant is going to be on top of you. The reason they didn't uh, push structures is they really wanted to do lane control, and that's yep. really what they need right now. So now they're they're getting a double boss, which is going to establish that link control, and they're going to get this tribute. What they really should do is they get this tribute, and they should push through with the twenty minute boss. Uh, that gives them a win condition. If they're just using this for macro, uh, they're going to lose the macro game in the long run. So they really need to push up here. 
Looks like uh, Devil's Rejects aren't worrying about the 20 minute boss, so that's just probably going to take keep by itself. Oh, a couple look like three of them are hurting back. Boss and they were able to get the tribute, so it does stop the curse potential. Yep, boss is doing work top. And here we go again. I think I might uh, jinx myself. I was definitely wrong last time, but uh, uh, this next tribute is is a massive, uh, massive one. Just because all three keeps down, uh, there's just so much macro pushed in that you got a free path to the core if you get any kills ahead if you're the Devil's Rejects here. Oh, I 100% so, agree. This is life or death here for, uh, for Hello Kitty, and they pulled it out uh, once before. Let's see if they can do it again. Yeah, this is the big fight. 14 to 13 for kills are in favor of Hello Kitty Action Squad. It's been a really back and forth map. I mean, I'd say the Devil's Rejects had control for the majority, but now uh, Hello Kitty's coming online. Yep. And they are not going away quietly. Early macro game in those level 4 to 10 variant kills were pretty huge in this game, but uh, it's all going to come down to this right here. Uh, Hello Kitty does have their macro pushed out. Looks like uh, I said before about very establishing position. Anybody that comes through there is going to get blown up. So they need to check bushes and they need to interrupt. There's a taunt. There's a planet cracker onto the Diva the Silence. Diva survives. And gets his taunt out. Big red button. Gets nullified by stasis. That's two down. Looks like they might be able to get away. Yeah, I don't think they can catch a catch a Lucio, but they want to go core here. And yeah, they for don't sure. Have much left on it. I'd say really good comeback here by uh, Hello Kitty, but it uh, just wasn't enough because of the macro, and because I think they needed to push with uh, one of those bosses to establish a win condition. But I agree. Played by both sides here. Yeah, really good game by both teams. They both came out swinging. But good game goes over to the Devil's Rejects, winning game one of this best of three series. To help them solidify their spot in th third place, I believe. Let's look at some numbers here. Let's see, we have 69 damage, or 69,000 by the KT. Really good job. Only getting one kill surprises me from Kelthos, but 85 damage by the Chromi, 56 by the Tychus. Um, healing numbers, Lucio is about where he should be. Good healing by the Stukov. Um, anything stand out to you? I mean, I think uh, in that, like the case of like the actual kills, uh, every every single one of those kills either had Varian auto attacking the person, uh, Stukov silencing that person, or the Phoenix like blowing through them, or the KT. So anybody could have got those kills for sure. But um, I would say that a lot of uh, a lot of macro, like a lot of macro stats uh, on the side of um, of the blue team, and uh, I think they they established those camps really early. And that allowed them to, to push out uh, later in the game because what are you going to do when you don't have any keeps left? You have to clear for like 50% of the time that you're playing the game. So, so who's, really your MVP, the game. who's your MVP for the last series? I mean, I think that the variant was really good in establishing the position in that those games, Satan saves, and uh, he wasn't dying that much either to do it. And I would say that uh, Soldier of God was really good as well on the, on the side of the Devil's Rejects. Um, Really good uh, gravity lapses when he could to interrupt. It was one of their only interrupts, so uh, good on those. And uh, yeah, generally pretty good play from all those involved, though. Yeah, I think I have to give mine to the KT. His gravity lapses were really on point. Yep. All right, we're just waiting to, for our next lobby. Oh, it looks like we already have it. Uh, big macro map uh, again a not a place where uh, camp clear is paramount camp clear and uh, taking camps is almost the objective of <laughs> I'm just updating the maps 
We are going to Garden of Terror. It looks like it was picked by the Devil's Rejects. And uh, so far this season in Garden of Terror, it looks like they played it twice. They won it once. Um, I expect kind of a, a similar idea of what they did uh, last time. Um, I did see that the, they do play uh, a lot of uh, Asmodean. And um, that's a, a very good character on this map because it's so big, as you can push down a lane. And the objective, again, is kind of like Chris Hollower, it doesn't matter that much. Um, I think that it's uh, the, you're going to see another Asmodan ban from the side of uh, Hello Kitty Action Squad, for sure. All right, and again, I want to thank everybody for staying tuned for this exciting series between Devil's Rejects and Hello Kitty Action Squad. And for those who are new, I am joined by the captain of Phoenix Rising Diamond, Northern Touch. He's co-casting with me. That's why you're getting such phenomenal analysis from him. One of those guys who's just really good at the video game. <clears throat> It's, uh, it's difficult figuring out uh, some of the how some of these maps work. I've just started shot calling the last couple of months for my team and um, finding how, what wind conditions are on each map and uh, how do those change up during the game. Even since the last game, I mean, the wind condition really is about pushing out lanes and to establish like early uh, early macro control, and uh, that carried the other team into late game. But everything turned around when you had that crazy mosh underneath the core, right? And, uh, oh, for sure. So many opportunities for both teams to win that game. All right. Letting know the casters are ready. And as we get into the draft, let's just do a quick PRE promo. Pause that out. Let's get into the draft, everybody. Sorry about that. A little slow on my buttons today. And again, for those who don't know, this is my ugly mug. I'm Sparhawk. Uh, Northern decided not to be on camera because he's got like an angelic glow about him. <laughs> and and um, no, I didn't want him to overshine me. That can never be done. So, so in terms of the draft right now, um... Uh, a lot of the good ca characters that were good last game are good this game, uh, as well as you're going to look for uh, characters that are good at uh, camp control, so or that take camp camps quickly, kind of like the Grey Mains, uh, Sonya's, Hogger is really good. Yeah, for um, sure. Deathwing's good on this map for the stall. For sure, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the same stuff that works on the last map will work on this map. There's just no bosses on this map, so boss control doesn't matter as much. I really enjoyed how the uh, Varian positioned himself in the last game. You know, he was always in a bush. He knew they were a one, coming one of two ways, so he was always getting the taunt out. So yep, as, really as good. the tank getting there early is important, it will be the exact same on this map as well. First team to get there, establish position around the objective. Uh, basically, the other team is walking in blind unless they're checking every bush, and there's a lot of bushes on this map. Yes, there is. And what so, I'm going to do, as we get close to the end of the draft, I'm going to start a prediction for who you feel in the audience is going to win game two. Uh, you can use your channel points to bid, and the more you bid, the more you have the chance to win. And right away, the variants took off again. So they ran this combo pretty well uh, last game. Uh, pick a target, blow it up. You're showing it early, though, here. So uh, getting cleanse here and using that cleanse is going to be pretty key you're going to want to cleanse healer probably in this rotation but they, they um what is it uh they're also kind of establishing at the same time that they are like a blow up comp so you yes. could you could full out macro them at this point you just pick a lot of like characters that can push an off lane and sylv is one of them that is true and i like the malfurion because if he drops his root 
And he, if he goes to silence, that can really help with lockdown for their for side sure. for the Li Ming follow up. Yeah, that's a that's a really good call there. The silence is huge in the variant. Variant will get off a couple seconds of uh, stun, but at least uh, at least you can walk out right after. And having the variant slept there and not be able to use any of abilities, it's a uh, really huge, especially right. in competitive play. I'm gonna throw the prediction up now. And I'm gonna let it run for five minutes, so we will have time to see the draft, and then you guys can make your predictions who you think will win. Just give me one second. Uh, Northern will keep you up to date with the draft. Yep, so uh, we saw the ETC ban, uh, really good ETC play on the last map, so they are banning it out, and uh, they don't have to worry about Mosh as much. And then we actually see a, a Phoenix ban from Hello Kitty, and uh, I guess they thought that traded in pretty well, and the, the Planet Cracker was good with the combo. But uh, Tass is also good. He's got two point-and-click spells that are really good for a follow-up for a Varian. See what they choose to, to pair I, with it. I really like the Tassadar. That wall after Varian taunt. Oh, oh and it, Graymane. Oh. Graymane really good on this map. Takes camps well. Going to be really good with a blow-up comp. Um, uh, not... not Insanely good on macro, but pretty decent. Um, but camps are the name of the game this map. And we see double healer. So that is actually a really good counter to a blow-up comp. Especially Uther main Uther. tank, you think? Yeah, uh, could be uh, Uther main tank here uh, and Blaze offlane. But either way, they've got a decent front line. they got a lot of healing, and they're going to be really good in team fights. Uh, they just have to make sure that they save the right abilities for that blow-up. All right. So let's see the final pick for the Devil's Rejects as we go into game two. Can they secure the domination or are we going to the, uh, my favorite, game three? They have Urel. So uh, basically the Devil's Rejects is a very, very divey team. You got Greyman, you got Urel, Varian jumping on top of you. It's scary if you're uh, air squishy on uh, Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty can out-sustain them, though. They can out-sustain through fights, and they just have to make sure they use their abilities to not die and to make to extend the fights as much as possible. They will have some issues with uh, macro this game, and they have to be on top of camps, send multiple people to camps uh, early in the game. All right, so I'll introduce the Devil's Rejects once we load in. We start off with Satan Saves on the Varian, Lunatic, Tix on Stukov, Hebrew Hammer on Ural, Soldier of God on Greymane, and Symbolic on the Tassadar, if you'd like to do the honors for Hello Kitty. So, uh, Hello Kitty, we've got Ice X on Uther, uh, Midrassi on Sylvanas, Jamond on Gr uh, Blaze, uh, Slips on Li Ming, and Istridor on Malfurion. And so far in the polls, it's showing a lot of people are favoring Hello Kitty squad in this one. Oh, Hello Kitty, if they can extend these fights, they actually have a really good like team fighting comp. They just have to make sure that they save their abilities, especially like Uther has multiple abilities, uh, especially on level 7 and level 10 that can save uh, people getting blown up. So if they survive through this and they can get through the macro on this game, they're looking good in extended team fights for sure. I 100% agree. And without the... Phoenix, I'm wondering if they're going to go bunker for the safety or the combustion for the possible 20 slow to help with the leaming. I mean, combustion is a legitimate pick. I think it is harder probably into the Stukov just because the amount of like AoE Ooh, healing. There's a party bush. If oh, I've ever look seen at that. One. Looking right away. Oh, and Tassadar. Gone. <laughs> oh, look at the follow up. Yep. So the downside, the upside on uh, Varian, levels 4 to 10 are really good for you. Uh, downside on Varian, levels 1 to 4, really just a, bad. Just a yeah. glorified minion. Yep. And really good on establishing bush control and vision there. Vision is massive on this map. So many bushes, so many places for people to walk through. Blaze is actually pretty good. He's not great for double soaking. He can camp clear. I play a lot, like a lot of Blaze as both main tank and offlane. 
So, I mean, Blaze is a really strong pick for, that I feel on this map. He can bring yeah, a lot of value. Lots of minion clear, and that was something that uh, that Hello Kitty was missing in this draft. So uh, putting the Blaze to offlane to clear minions quickly and having the defensive uh, tools that Blaze has, the AoE stun is really good if you feel the other team's bunching up a lot. And uh, yeah, if the other if um, Devil's Rejects dives in, having a bunker <laughs> there is never a bad thing, especially if your team is mostly squishies. I'm not sure who wins between Sylvanas and a Grey Mean. You know, I think as long as Sylvanas stays safe, then she's got the poke advantage. But if he gets to dive her. Yeah, I think uh, Sylvanas uh, can win this game. I think it really is like a 1v1 uh, skill matchup more than uh, right. a character has a has a legit advantage. But uh, if Sylva's there solo, she always has the advantage. So that's true. That's the biggest difference between the characters. Yeah, both of them also accomplish the ability to push down a lane uh, while nobody's out of it. Uh, Greyman is also really good at pushing off lane. It looks like both teams might be establishing that, but uh, uh, Madrasi from Hello Kitty has to. Oh, there's here, a taunt so. and the wall. Uther goes down. Big. Getting Especially that first right kill, though. Yeah, right before the trim. Yep. So they got macro out in both lanes now. A good orb. And uh, if you're if you're the Devil's Rejects, you go for a taunt here, or you can actually back off and push with these camps. This uh, tribute isn't actually the most important thing. And uh, right now you got a camp that's going to basically take the entire wall bot. Oh, they are coming in strong. Nice done by Blaze. And a root. There's the sleep. Ural goes down. Yeah, and just to think a bit of a communication issue for the Devil's Rejects. You didn't have uh, Greyman there until uh, late, but uh, just so much work done by those camps and uh, a lot of macro there. So not not quite a lot was lost for the Devil's Rejects. They just have to get back to lane and start soaking till the next one. And if my volume or Northern's is too loud or too quiet or the game volume is too quiet, please let me know and I can adjust it accordingly. I want to thank you all for staying tuned for this action-packed adventure series we're going on tonight. And if you're new to the channel, please leave a follow. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps me greatly. And I do plan to... Be, I'm casting uh, next Thursday. I'm not casting tomorrow. The next week is basically a week off as teams are just finishing up. And then playoffs. And I'm going to be running a new starting soon overlay for the playoffs. Something I sat down and got creative on. Look, a uh, very establishing position here early again. But he's a bit far away from his team. He has to back out of it. Ural looking to jump over onto the back line here. Ural knocks them out of the... There's a stun. Ural running now. Super low. Uh, both teams have tap right right nearby, so they can use it. Uh, Hello Kitty is really low right now, but they have a lot of sustain. Just have to there's a taunt. That taunt. There's the blow up. There's the wall in the Li Ming. Uther's gonna go next, I think. Blaze, does he have a jet propulsion away? I don't think he does. No, just down. And I'm really surprised, and I'm enjoying it, that the Tassadar actually went trait build. It's one of yeah, my favorite it's... builds to play Tassadar. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I always see one in seven trait for sure. Um, the uh, the level four is an interesting pick, though. See the tribute go over to Devil's Rejects. So both teams tied at one. And they're going to establish 10 here early. Get some camps out and look for a fight here pretty soon, I think. Um, thing about that last fight is uh, if any person you want to die early, it's Uther. So you, if you're Uther, you want to be the one taking taunts a lot of the time here. Because yeah, if for you're sure. going to lose that fight and trade one for one, at least you're getting healing with it too. 
It looks like there's an invade happening. Yep, a light invade, but uh, he is down in the middle of nowhere here. There's four people surrounding him. Let's see if Hebrew can get out. There's a stun. stun. Pops is Pops. absorption. Okay, they're using uh, they're using their alts to invade here, but it still is a five v four because uh, Tass is pushing off lane. Tass is getting work done top. There's a lot of pressure top lane, especially with an objective bot. And he's gonna finish his quest. Really good time too. I usually try to have mine down for seven, and he got his at six forty two. So good for him. Yeah, this me this is gonna be fort down for sure. But this is a five v four down here. So uh, Hello Kitty uh, needs to move up and Big try to take this. Big yep. combustion. Huge. Disintegrate. Got the reset for immediately. Ming. It's exactly what they needed there. Just missed the stun. Ooh, uh, but, but they did send an order for another kill here. Satan sitting in the bushes, just looking for a target. The wall really saved him there from the uh, the blaze charge sun. There's the tassel to delay. Oh, nice delay. Oh, big oh, taunt, but big yeah. root. But a lot of damage coming back the other way, and the resets only gets one though. Stukov goes down. Oh, Madrasi's in big trouble. Oh, a massive root! What a massive. root! Oh, ho, ho, ho. root of the game. Oh, Madrasi super low out again. Another taunt. Blaze in a world of trouble. Blaze is down this time. Yeah, they're just getting slightly too split. The thing about um, having uh, double heals is you want to be a death ball. You want to be on top of each other so you yeah. can heal people in range. And uh, when Hello Kitty got split there, that's when they started to die. And you saw uh, Bell's Rejects, even though they were down a player, could still taunt a target with three people and that target would die. Exactly. Yeah, I'm I am surprised. I like the plasma shield pickup. Usually I like the the wall just for the damage and the slow that it can present. However, wow, massive black hole. Divine shield is used. Malfurion goes down. Another big uh, silence and another big taunt. So the first set of Garden Terrors is going to go over to the side of the Devil's Rejects. You're going to see the Devil's Rejects use their uh, Talent Tier and Player Advantage to invade the top right camp. That's going to establish a lot of macro here. There's three camps up right now, and they're probably all going to go to Devil's Rejects before this next uh, tribute. Ooh. Ooh, that's a big one. That was like an I unnecessary said, kill. Any oh. any combination of, of three characters, especially with the Varian uh, Stukov, means anybody can die. There's another big one, but it's under oh, it's under the towers. It's a massive amount of damage on Varian there. Just not enough CC to keep him there. Yeah, if they had Li Ming in that fight, I think they would have actually gotten uh, probably a couple of kills. So now the choice is they, they don't have 13. They will have it just by clearing up these minions here. I mean, they need to fight for this while they're on the same talent tier. Yeah, I think Blaze rotates down now. You might lose a little bit of the top keep, but uh, this is a fight you want to take now. 13 talent here. No variant in sight yet. Hebrew Hammer's getting low. Taunt, big stun. You're all diving in. Pops are ultimate. Trade perfectly. Or that Big perfectly. black hole to come out. Blaze Uther go down again. Ooh. Wow. No orbs, but, yeah. Gray so Mane just go is doing work. Oh I know, he's just going off on that Gray Mane. <coughs> yeah, this is gonna be big. This probably looks like a keep and at least two here. Yeah, this top keep's definitely going down. I have a feeling mid keep is going to go as well. 
Yeah, the downside on a, on a Brawly double helicomp is you need to have enough uh, wave clear, and it's going to be really tough, especially to clear that mid with the uh, the Giants as well. Big taunt, silence on Li Ming. Combustion's coming out again. Nice black hole. Oh. They Rusio do get Stuke off. Down. Huge defense here. They need to clear the wave and save that key, but that's a massive turnaround. That's exactly what they wanted. And they will save their bottom keep. So they definitely took some damage. Graming or Varian is going to go in and finish this keep off. Oh, but the and sleep. Can anybody get to him? Can they get to him? They got the stun. They got the block. They did get Varian. I think they're going to get Urel. Wow. Yup. Keep, keep for two players. Uh, that's, <coughs> that's a good trade for uh, for Hello Kitty if they can use it to take something here. It's just a little bit more difficult with a uh, double healer. But they do have the Sylph. They could go for a fart right now. Um, they definitely have an advantage in this next tribute. They need to set up there. I agree. And I would like to see Sylph like, try and help push top. At least get some counter pressure in that but one a, lane. But a lot of pressure bot right now, so they're going to have to respond to that. Um, so this uh, this next tribute is going to be even talent here. Uh, you do have lanes pushed in pretty far, but uh, if you're uh, Hello Kitty again, you want to get to that tribute area a bit early. And if you're, uh, especially Uther right now, you got to watch your positioning. Oh, for sure. Looks like everybody's rotating up for this fight. Using the vision, but get spotted. Wall miss. Wall's down for a while. There's the root, there's the sleep. However, Grey Mane on the back line. He's starting to cause havoc on everybody. Big stun, big combustion going out. The blaze goes down. They are following after them. Stun. Graming does go down. Leaming with the resets. Big taunt. Orb goes out. Misses. Uther gonna go down. At least can pop out some heals. And they are trade three for one in that exchange. Yeah, Another the, well fought fight by the Devil's Rejects. The uh, the Grey Mane and the Urel positioning and setting up early with that vision in those top bushes. There's so many bushes there. And they could just jump on the back line and get an instant kill. Turns into a 5v4 and you have the advantage for the rest of the fight. So good job uh, both these games so far about Devil's Rejects getting to, uh, to objectives early and using that vision. And they will have 20s first. Their only yeah. downside is that they have no minions that they can really beat up. They're looking to push keep here. This is a 5v4 though. Let's see if uh, Hello Kitty recognizes this. This is a pre 25v4. Or without root. Huge sleep. Big. Root. Tastar does go down. Combustion goes out. Huge. Varian goes down. Urel can get away There's here. silence. Although, silence. So she Do we have jump. a jet propulsion? Oh, it oh, still gets her. Huge. So now you're going to have the uh, the tribute here. Uh, you don't have 20 yet, but you can push any lane. You got a sylph, so. Yeah. So who do you send back to clear, please? I mean, so it's interesting because the uh, the wave will push out with the uh, tribute here. Your main goal here is to actually like push as hard as you can with the Sylv and get as much structure damage to try to even up the macro in this game. Oh, that's right, right. The garden terrors will clear out the minions. Yeah, because you're not gonna you're not gonna necessarily win the game with this right here, but you are going to get back hopefully some forts. So you want to push as hard as possible, especially with the Sylv. So we're going to see yeah, them pushing like, down mid. I agree with that 100%. And uh, Devil's Rejects will be back up here pretty soon for a fight, although they have nowhere to really retreat to. You really want to go on, uh, especially the squishies that are stepping up right now. Let's 
so they do take the fort. They continue pushing mid, and then I think they'll either rotate bottom or top after. I think they're uh, rotating bottom. Down. Maybe going they're looking for, for the a hit. Right the away. yep. Greaming does the right thing and goes through his gate back towards the other. Gets way. caught with the arrow. Out. Oh, this is not good. Good hunt. Nice. Sylvana, when she locks onto you, she just hunts you down. Great call on that rotation. They were safe going in behind the fort because either the, the plant was going to turn that fort off or Sylv can, so really good rotation. I 100% agree. Yes. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't push keep, but I guess you know, they, they want to take the camp away. And I mean, a bruiser camp with a siege camp makes it pretty friggin' strong. Yeah, it's good for macro, but you want to get this keep. I think they yeah. may think that they can get both here, but with a Sylv, and double heals where you don't have like a lot of siege potential, you want to push as hard as you can when you have an advantage. Oh, for sure. But this is a huge amount of a uh, of push bot. Black hole goes out, misses, and you see the keep turned off. This is gonna be Big a keep shove. for sure. The green mean is back. Forward. They want a brawl. Taunt goes Big out. taunt, silence. Uther goes down. He took redemption, so he will be coming Rogue back, back up. Lots of Uther heals there, but too much damage. Nice divine shield. Oh, massive root, huge root. Gets one. Uther goes down this time. Raymin goes down again. And they get another uh, reset for Lehman. They get Blaze. <sighs> wow. So now they have to go back and defend Core because there's a couple catapults there and the uh, Bruisers. This isn't necessarily critical tribute, and I don't think uh, Devil's Rejects can win here, but um, this is going to establish macro for sure on the side of uh, Devil's Rejects to try to take this third tribute now, um, after this one. Are you surprised that they decided for that core attempt when they knew all five were up? So or... I think it really depends if you think you can win the brawl. I'd say so far, um, when uh, the Hello Kitty has been defending versus attacking, they've probably been a bit better you know, on some of these team fights. Uh, but yeah, I'm a little bit surprised they pushed core, but it, they didn't lose that much because of it. And again, this is an uneven, uh, an uneven fight. See if Uther can get in here. Nice Uther save does not have by Sue. shield yet. And there we go. Five people here. You've got Devil's Rejects invading top right camp. This is going to be a huge macro pressure on the top. Uh, at this point, you want to immediately clear this for, for Hello Kitty and try yeah, to you do. get to that uh, that tribute in time because that could be game. Yeah, they definitely need to clear this as fast as possible and get themselves down there. Well, like I say, if you look oh. bottom lane for uh, for Hello Kitty, they've they got three, three catapults, catapults on core right now too. Yeah, if they can do more work this at all. It's oh, didn't goes take away the shield before. But they can't stall it. Huge wall. The wall wall saves them. Pushes them back in. Oh wow. That was a really good wall. But because the gray main is so far back, they cannot engage in a fight yet. So it's an easy clear right there in mid. Um, really depends if they can defend core from this uh, this top garden terror. They're doing the right thing, uh, concentrating fire on it, though. Massive taunt. Divine shield. Combustion does go out. Luther goes down. Sylvanas goes down. Can three stand and defend this? Big poly's be going be up by the core. Really uh, Furion goes down. Blaze goes down, or does he, he escapes? Oh, 
Over 25%, 20%, 15, 10. Yep. Catapults on core. That's Good GG. game. The Devils rejects. They came out to play. The domination okay. definitely helps them secure their spot. I mean, they they ran the kill, kill comp a couple times uh, with a bit of different characters as a follow-up damage, but... Um, uh, they're obviously really experienced on it. Really good on them, uh, recognizing that they had to establish vision both those games, and really good on them, uh, like executing in those fights. All of them stayed out of vision, and they waited for uh, for Hello Kitty to walk in, and uh, they killed them. Hello Kitty did have some really good special de uh, defenses in both those games underneath structures, and uh, when they were defending, they were looking really good. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. So who who's our who's your MVP? For wow, doubles. Uh, so that that last game. Oh, oh, we have uh, we have some uh, members here right now, I guess. Yes. Oh, so you still have some. One sec. We're just trying to pick our MVP for the last game. <laughs> and I so, am gonna go with the Tassadar because oh. I'm a Tassadar player and I love the build that he went. Oh, I love auto attack build too. Um, like if I if I was to pick that last game, I think uh, like Grammy really did work in damage on the back line. Uh, it was at a vision a lot and uh, really good dives. Uh, was getting uh, solo kills on uh, on characters that were split from the fight and uh, and yeah, really good follow up. All right, everybody. So we are joined by the crew of the Devils Rejects. So I want to say congratulations, everyone, on your dominations. How is everybody feeling? Good. It's good to hear. Um, so let's talk first map. You guys definitely carried your blow up comp, um, and you carried it really well. Um, they were they had that one chance with that mosh pit on the core that did some d damage to your team, and gave them a chance to get back into it. However, they weren't able to capitalize. Um, what were you guys' thoughts on the game? Did you get who you wanted in draft? You know, were you able to play it the way you thought you were going to? Yeah, so basically with the draft, um, let me do some research, and we we were looking, and they like to go variant, the variant taunts to cough blow up. So we were like, well, if they don't go a cleanse, we'll just take it from them. And they also don't like um, macro heavy maps, like they, they like BOE. And, um, okay. I, so basically it was like we take the fucking taunt variant from them and we go for a macro heavy map so that was the game plan okay is that why you guys decided to take cursed hollow i mean garden yeah. of terror for the second yeah. one yeah that's why we took cursed hollow and garden of terror okay first pick first game so i think they yeah picked hollow, didn't well, yeah they picked cursed hollow I yeah think, they, they picked it. cursed hollow but you guys yeah. really just really laid a, a lesson on to them I mean, well, you, we really like those maps. Like, normally, I, I mean, I'm a big Asmo player. It's, like, my favorite hero, hands down, in this game. So I was hoping I could, you know, pull out an Asmo, especially on Cursed Hollow. But yeah, uh, right. I, I said uh, during the draft, actually, that, uh, that especially on the, the Garden game or the Cursed game, that that is one of the, those, both those maps are, you don't have to go to the actual objective, so you can push oh, yeah. down in opposite lanes. So <laughs> those are perfect Asmo maps. Yeah. Yeah, you guys played them really well. Um, did anything in their comp, like when you guys had yours and you saw theirs, were you surprised by anything that they took? Or you're like, we don't care what they take, we know what we're running and we're just going to crush? So basically we were trying to take them off them comfort heroes and I okay. think that's what we did. So we took them off their comfort heroes and we didn't see anything that could really uh, counter what we picked, so we felt pretty comfortable with it. Well, yeah, you're... Uh, uh, the Anduin plays, I mean, you're hiding in bushes and you just come out of nowhere, taunt, and everybody just followed up and killed that said target. So, really well played. That's how you run a blow-up clump. So, really good team effort there. Um, the thing I was really impressed with you guys is that uh, not only did you run the blow up comp well, um, you you went to vision and around the uh, the objectives early. You got there first most of the time, which allowed uh, the variant to set up in in, uh, in a bush. And uh, when they walked in, you could execute on them. Is that something that you guys are uh, are very aware of when you're going into uh, to some of those tributes? It oh, usually yeah. gets screamed through chat about 30 seconds before where everyone yells, <laughs> "Go to the point!" <laughs> yeah, I'm normally screaming like 
with, with the thing with the blow up comp is you got to be set up for it you got to be ready for it you got to see that opportunity to engage right and you got like if you're not set up they, they have the vision on you and you'll have the vision on them so that the, the key to the key to the blow up comp is not having the enemy team not having any type of cleanse or anything that can help them disengage from the <laughs> blow up comp and also having vision on you so uh, being on time and it was just a, a key to the, the success of a blow up comp right um the other thing i did want to ask is um i remember during the uh the curse hollow game you guys had the uh the core push bot there when it was 25 percent health right right yeah. and uh what were you guys thinking going into into that at that push you had the had the reg Rag on keep, uh, so I, did push in, and uh, they they were just set up uh, ready to defend. I made the call, and it ended up being a really bad call because I thought that uh, with it being that low, I figured Rag could get in the the building. He can use his, you know, hey, I'm the elemental fire lord. Swing his hammer, throw his E and W, and uh, we just could not get that little. 25% down and then Satan was like hey let's just you know slow and roll and uh, that ended up being way better but that was I felt so bad after that because I was positive I was like hey we're gonna end right here and did not go yeah. that way yeah normally yeah. I'm the I'm the main shot caller but my team was like hey we can end we can use rag to end and I'm like okay if y'all say y'all can do it then you know a good shot caller always listens to his team so I'm like, all right, well, if y'all say y'all got it, let's do it. And it didn't turn out into our favor. But then I was like, all right, well, what do we got to lose, right? We got all the lanes pushed out. We die. By the time they get the lanes pushed back to our side, we're, we'll be back up. Yeah. yeah honestly, right. from my perspective, I think it was the correct the correct call. Like, the yeah. going to the core there was, was actually a really good call. I think the only thing that actually messed you guys up is that you showed in wave. And then yeah. the other backed in time. If you had been there... Five seconds earlier, they, you just put all your damage on core and you got rag there, and they can do nothing. They can't push into you. So, this is like even a little bit of the timing thing, but uh, the call was great. Yeah, because honestly, what do you lose? You you lose some you lose some map pressure. You don't lose any fortune keeps, and what do you win? You win the game. Yeah, so, exactly. So <laughs> that, that's my thought process on that. Yeah, good job on you guys finding that or trying to find those win conditions. You never want to run out of win conditions in a game, and it felt like that uh, that could have happened to Hello Kitty a few times, but they pulled it out out of, out of some crazy situations too. Uh, the, there's some big nauseous, especially in late game. So let me ask for uh, just your playoff standings. You guys are now tied with the Probus Strikes Back. Um who won that series when you guys played? Like, are you guys officially second place now? Um, probably strike backs. We we had uh, symbolic. He's out on vacation, so we did have a sub. So we did lose that series. Okay. So they will be placed higher, but we are looking forward to that rematch with the oh, whole yeah. team. I bet. Yeah. I mean, really well played. Like, I was really impressed with how you guys came out tonight. You definitely came out swinging, wanting to fight. That's for sure. Yeah, we've definitely been doing a lot of training, getting ready for um, playoffs. playoffs. And, uh, you know, Purpose is one of our one of our marks because, you know, they, they beat us when we had a sub and, you know, we're looking to give them the full team in the playoffs. Right, that makes perfect sense. Okay, well, I don't want to keep you guys from celebrating or do whatever you choose to do. So I'll, I'll go down the list, and if you want to do a shout-out, you can. And then Northern and I will close off the stream. So we'll start with you, Satan. Yeah, shout out to uh, the casters. Thank you for dedicating your time and volunteering to cast our our little games we play here. You know, y'all help the community and y'all make it great. Um, Thanks. And shout out to uh, Hello Kitty Action Squad. You know, uh, the team's been around forever and we're kind of a newer team and we've always, you know, looked to them like a, the, they're a higher team and they're a well-known team and, you know, was glad to actually play them and win against them. So, and uh, Isex on over on Hello Kitty Squad, who does a lot of streaming. So, shout out to them, guys. All right. Uh, uh, Bear, how about you? Uh, shout out for America and uh, Symbolic <laughs> to your Grandma. She's amazing, <laughs> straight up. Fair enough. We'll take it to Symbolic. Uh, so, Mike actually did call in the middle of that game. And I told the team, I said, hey, I got to put the headset down. And, <laughs> you know, you can't not pick up for the Grams. Um, 
So I appreciate my team, you know, hanging by. <laughs> uh, shout out to my mom. That's always my number one shout out. Uh, the waifu and the family, because they deal with me yelling at the comms when they're all trying to sleep. And everyone has a mustache. Big shout out to those guys. Perfect. I'm always rocking the stash. And uh, waiting for Sparha. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Luna, Lunatic, how about yourself? Uh, for me, I appreciate the casters. It's always fun wherever we have a caster to, to stream our games and stuff. And then uh, just anybody that plays this game uh, makes the game more fun and keeps it popular. And, uh, yeah. Now, are you guys thinking Appreciate of taking your team into uh, the next Mania season when it begins shortly? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, due to Heroes Lounge closing, um, we um, the Devil's Rejects has, we have about four teams that we've set up. It's um, the Devil's oh, nice. Rejects Banshees, Devil's Rejects Immortals, and the Devil's Rejects. What's the fourth team? Um, mana, mana addicts so we're trying to you know keep the competitive league as popular as possible and uh, we definitely support uh, Valkamir and everybody over there at CCS that's contributing to the um, competitions so we'll definitely all be in to Nexomania that is awesome I can't wait to see you guys there I'll probably be casting your games a lot all right People, I will let you guys go and enjoy your rest of your weekend. Have a great time. I know you're now done with the season, so good luck when the playoffs come. Hopefully I can pick you up and I can see what you guys do in the playoffs. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Take care, everybody. All right, guys. Somebody put some background music on. And do a quick advertisement, and then we will close this up. Ronan, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. All right, Northern. So we watched a domination by the Devil's Rejects over Hello Kitty Action Squad tonight. What are your final thoughts on what we watched tonight? I think Devil's Rejects just really was really good again about establishing control of uh, macro and camps early on, using those to push out and then get uh, vision, get to uh, objectives early, and they use that in really good team fighting. If you're uh, Hello Kitty, you gotta pat yourself on the back for some of the defenses that you had in certain situations when your back was against the wall. Uh, huge, huge moshes, some big turnarounds on uh, even on that Garden of Terror game. Um, you were in there on every one of those fights, and I think uh, you could have taken any of those games, uh, depending on uh, on what happened. So, some of, some of those fights end up being coin flips, but uh, I'd say that uh, that Devils Rejects really showed uh, really good uh, coordination together tonight. Oh, I 100% agree. All right, everybody. I don't think I'm picking up a stream tomorrow. I might. I may. I'm not. I'm undecided. Other than that, um, my next cast guaranteed is Thursday with Phoenix Rising Amethyst a team who struggled this season however maintained their cool and have taken the whole season in stride um, they haven't had a chance to win a match even a match yet but the team stayed together didn't quit the season so giving them their last hurrah um, other than that I wish you guys the best of the weekend and I will See you guys all in the Nexus or when I cast next. Take care. I'm out. Say goodbye, Northern. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for joining. Peace. See you in the Nexus.